more of a puzzle and less of a programming problem. I say that because this problem can be solved without taking the help of any special data structures. So what kind of a solution do we come up with? Let's find it out. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start with the brute force approach and quickly find out that it is not optimal. After that, we will break down the problem into several scenarios and then try to come up with an efficient solution. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a string and you just have to rearrange its characters such that any two adjacent characters are not the same. So what do we actually mean by that? Let us look at our first test case. In our string, we have three characters, A, A and B, right? And you can see that these two same characters are adjacent, correct? So you have to return me a string where none of the same characters are adjacent. So as you can see, in this particular test case, my answer is A, B, A. And you can see that in this string, there are no two adjacent characters which are same, right? This problem also mentions that if you cannot form any such string, then you have to return an empty string. And we can see that in a test case number two. I have the string A, A, A and B, correct? Now, no matter however you arrange its characters, you can never reach a scenario where any two adjacent characters are not the same, right? You can see that in all of these cases, there is at least one character which is same as its adjacent character. So for this particular test case, you just need to return an empty string as your answer, right? And there is one more thing that you should be careful about in this problem. For example, I have a string like this, A, A, B, B. Now, there can be one or more different possible combinations where no two adjacent characters are same. You can see that in this particular test case, you can either arrange the string A, B, A, B, or you can arrange it as B, A, B, A. Both of our outputs satisfy the criteria, right? So for such test cases, you can return any of these strings as your answer and it will be accepted. You don't have to find out all such strings, just one of them is enough. So for this particular test case, any of these strings will be your answer, right? Now, if you feel that the problem statement is clearer to you, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. When you start solving this problem, I know that it can be a little overwhelming at first and the brute force solution doesn't help either. So how does a brute force solution actually look? For example, you are given with this example string, right? And you have to reorganize it. You can see that you have three X's that are adjacent to each other. So for a brute force approach, what you can do is you can try to generate all the possible different combinations. For example, you can have all such combinations and there will be many more, right? And out of all of these generated combinations, you are going to find out which of the string satisfies your criteria. You can see that in all of these three strings, you can at least find some of the characters that are same and are still adjacent, correct? If you go on and try to find out more such strings, eventually you will find a string where your condition is satisfied. You can see that in this rearrangement, no two adjacent characters are the same, correct? So for this particular test case, this string will be your answer. And yes, this solution works and it will give you a correct answer. But this is so time taking. Just generating all of these different permutations will take up a total time of order of n factorial. And that is too much. You do not want it. It is only handy when your string size is very small. Let's say up to five characters or six characters. So certainly you need to find an efficient solution. But while going through this brute force approach, you can at least be sure of one thing. And that is that the majority element of the string, for example, these x's, right? Any character that occurs a lot of time in the string, you have to separate out all of their occurrences, right? If you check out this answer string, all of these x's have been separated, right? And this is the only catch that you have to take and now try to build your solution. How can we come up with an efficient solution? Once again, you have the sample string and this time you have to start thinking about an efficient solution. One thing is very clear from our brute force approach. That is the majority element or the character in the string will play a very important part. Because think about it. 
if you have a character that occurs so many times that is the majority element correct that character can never be close to each other you have to separate it out right so based upon this majority character we can actually divide our problem into three different scenarios so one of the scenario is when the number of characters of your majority element they are greater than half of the length of your string what do i mean by that for example i have my string like this in this particular string you can see that x occurs the majority number of times right so this is the majority element and how many times can you find it you can find it five number of times correct and what is the length of the string the length of the string is 8 and length divided by 2 will be 4 correct so this simply means that if you try to distribute x all throughout your string i have this 8 species over here right and you will want to separate out all of these x's right so the best possible scenario for you will be x then you leave a space x once again you leave a space x once again you leave a space and then x again correct so out of eight spaces you have filled up four right now check it out you have one more x remaining correct and where will you place it no matter wherever you place this test case will fail correct so if you find out that the majority element is greater than the half of the length of your string you can simply return an empty string that means you can never be able to reorganize a string such that no two adjacent characters are same. So if you ever have this condition, just simply return an empty string and that will be your answer. Now moving forward, you have your second case. In our second case, I'm just saying that the number of majority elements are exactly equal to the length by two. So it simply means that if I have a string like this, in this string, I have a total of eight characters and the majority element x occurs four times, correct? So what do I have over here? The count of majority element is four and half of the length is also four. So now I will once again have eight spaces to fill up, correct? And what we will do is we will take up the majority element and try to space it out. I add all of my elements over here. I have filled up all of my four spaces. Now I do not have any more majority elements and check it out. You have four more spaces remaining and four characters remaining. Just fill them out in any possible way and you can return a string, right? So you can safely say that whenever the count of majority element equals half of the length of your string, that case will be always possible. And you can simply reorganize your string by putting the majority element in alternate positions and then filling out your other characters in any way possible. And for this particular scenario, this string will be your answer, right? One thing to note over here is that if the length of your string is an odd number, then you won't be able to do length by two, correct? So in that case, you have to do length plus one by two. And after that, everything will remain the same. Now, moving on to the last scenario, which is the most generic. And most of the test scenarios are based upon this case. And that is when the count of majority element is less than half of the length of your string. This time we can take up the example that we initially had, right? Over here, the majority element is still X, right? And you can find it a total of three times, correct? And what is the value of length by two? The total length of this string is eight and the value of length by two will be four. So over here, the number of majority elements is less than half the length, correct? So now what do you do in this type of scenario? What we do over here is just maintain a count of each of the characters that you are encountering in the string. So once I make that count, what do I find out? I see that X occurs a total of three times. Then P occurs a total of two times. Then you have R for one time, W for one time and a k for one time, right? So x is your majority element and p is your second majority element. And now going ahead, we try to follow the same approach. What did we have over here? We had eight spaces to fill up, correct? I will now take up my majority element and then try to fill up the alternate spaces. 
Once you're done with your majority element, move to the second majority element. In this particular scenario, the second majority element is P, right? So what we will do is we will follow the same approach. Leave one space and then add the character P. I added a P over here, right? And now when I will try to move ahead, I cannot find any other space, right? So what you will do is now go back to the beginning and start filling up all the remaining places. So I fill one more P over here. Now I am done with two characters, right? Just keep on following this order and keep on filling all of the remaining values. So now I will find my third majority element and that is R. Then I find my other majority element that is W and then I will have my last majority element and that is K. So once you iterate through your entire table in the order of the priority, then you will be able to arrive at a string where all of these characters are organized in such a way that no two characters are adjacent and they are same. An important thing to notice over here is that this approach will work every time. Why is that so? Just think about it. Once you have filled up all of your majority characters, right? Now, as you move to the second most majority character, I will write down a P over here, correct? Now, for this test case to fail, you must have a P in all of these places, right? Otherwise, this can never fail. You will have your second majority element and it will fill out all of these places, right? But if you fill out P at all of the other places, then X will no longer be the majority element. So this becomes a contradiction and you can safely say that this scenario will never ever happen. All you need to do is just pick up the characters in the order of the majority and then keep on populating them one by one. I picked up P, filled up one position, so this reduces to 1. Now go back, fill up P over here again, this reduces to 0. Now keep moving ahead in this same table and fill out all of the remaining characters. Once you are done, just form this string and this will be your answer. Now, based on this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I once again have a sample string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function reorganize string. By the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create a hash table. So this hash table will store the frequency of each of the characters. So what I will simply do is I create a hash array where each of these locations is storing the frequency of each of the characters. And once this for loop completes, I will now have determined the frequency of each character in this array itself. So it will store X as a frequency of three, R has a frequency of one, W has a frequency of one, and P has a frequency of two. Moving on to our next step. Now we will try to determine my majority element and its count. So I iterate through this entire hash and then try to find out, okay, this is my character with the maximum frequency. So now you know what you have to do. If this maximum frequency is greater than the length, then you just have to return an empty string, right? So you just return an empty string and that's it, you are done. Otherwise, what we now do is, we will try to create our result string. And this result string will have the same length as the input string itself. And if you remember, what did we do? We picked the majority element and added it at alternate spaces, correct? So in my next for loop, I will take the majority element and add it at all of the alternate places, right? This is done. And now, once you're done with this, just start one more loop to fill up all of the remaining characters in every other alternate position. So once this loop ends, it will have all of the remaining characters just like this. At the very end, just simply return this and it will be your answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you iterate through the entire string just once to create your entire hash and the space complexity of this solution is 1 because this requires a constant space of 26 characters where you will be storing all of your hash. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that coming up with solutions like these is not natural at all. I accept it. 
But what you can do is you can go step by step. For example, in this particular problem, you can easily analyze that once you find the majority element, that will govern if you can reorganize the string or not. So once you find that out, just try to break down the problem into several different scenarios and then see if you can come up with a solution. It is not necessary that you will come up with an easy solution every time. There might be several other problems where you have to take the help of some other data structure. So while going through this video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other such problem which feel very tricky at first, but then they come up with a very easy solution without even any data structure. They are more of those puzzles. So tell me everything in the comment section below. Tell me all of those problems. It will be helpful for anyone else also who is watching this video. It will become a nice collection of all such problems. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what other problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.